Hey, Ken, we're twinning today. Yes, we are. <laughs> Ken's visiting us all the way from Maryland, and we've been doing a lot of hydraulics this year, Ken. Yes, yep, yep. So one of the questions we've been getting is just really basic questions about the hydraulic systems on these little tractors. So while you were here, I was, thought it would be really good uh, for us to just kind of do a little bit uh, just a basic explanation of how hydraulics work okay. on, a, on a compact tractor. Yeah, on a compact, right. We want to try yes. to cover every hydraulic system or every right. hydraulic type. Just right. these compact tractors all behave very similarly. Yes, they do. So No I matter what brand. Do. Yeah, they all yeah. do. Yeah. Yep. So what do we got here? So quick overview. We have very few basic components in the systems. We have, uh, we have a pump. We have a reservoir or a tank. We've got a pressure relief valve. We have a directional control valve, or SCV, selective control valve, and we have cylinders. That's really the components that we have to make everything work. The pump pumps the fluid, moves the fluid through the system. The okay, how does that work? So the pump's pumping the fluid. Yep. Um, does it only pump fluid if we need it? No, it pumps the fluid all the time. There's okay. constantly fluid flowing through the system in a circular motion. Okay, so it's always a loop. Yep, it's always a constant loop, always. Um, if you interrupt that loop or stop that loop completely, then the system goes into what we call relief. Okay. And that means a pressure relief valve or PRV opens at a specific pressure because the valve is closed, fluid's pumping to that valve, it can't go anywhere, so it, it dumps that pressure into the tank okay. to relieve. So yep. this is the noise I hear, like when I when I try to lift something that I can't lift. Yes. I'll hear it kind of squeal. Yep, exactly. That's the pressure relief valve opening or directing the fluid that can't flow anymore into the tank. So the, because if the fluid stops completely or deadheads the pump, then the, the pump would blow up. The pump could blow up, a line could blow, something's going to blow. The pressure's got to go somewhere. The pump okay. is not smart enough to know to stop pumping. Okay. It, it can only pump fluid when it's running. That's it. Okay, and so this relief valve is set to a given pressure that if, yes. the, if the pressure in the, in the system exceeds that, yes. then it's going to allow it to bypass. Yes, and that's done with just a heavy spring. Okay. Just a heavy spring in there that the fluid, when the fluid overcomes the sp spring pressure, the valve opens and the fluid dumps to the tank through a very small orifice, so that creates heat. So we have to be careful of leaving that relief valve open for a long period of time. Okay, so I think what he's saying is when you hear that squealing, stop doing what you're doing, Yes. find the problem and, and, and solve it, which a right. lot of times is just you're trying to lift something that it won't lift, Right. or maybe you've got a, a cylinder extended as far as it'll extend. That's correct, absolutely. Um, uh, just any time you hear that squeal, it, it doesn't hurt it to do it just a moment or three. Even, even a minute won't hurt it. It's extended period of times, which leads us into what we hear so often, I think, is power beyond. Okay. And what, what is power beyond, and what do we use power beyond for on a tractor? Okay. So I use power beyond for a lot of things. Uh, yep. The typical usage is the backhoe. Absolutely. So power beyond means a constant flow of fluid. We have no control over this fluid. It's running anytime the tractor's running. And that's that loop we talked about. And that's that loop, and that is used on devices, implements, attachments, whatever, that have their own control valves, a backhoe or a log splitter are the two common things. Okay, so it just extends that loop. It's just That's a correct. way that you can, you, when you disconnect that power yep. beyond and connect it to that attachment, it, it yep. makes your little circle bigger. That's absolutely correct. That you're pumping oil yep. through all That's the time. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it takes power beyond the tractor. Yes. So if we open up that connection, which is at the rear of the tractor, a hose that connects back to itself, we open up that connection, the fluid has no place to go. We try to start the tractor, what happens? The fluid can't go anywhere. We hear that squeal noise right. from the very moment it starts. And the engine's lugging down. The engine's under strain. Not good, you know? The engine's trying to overcome the, uh, the hydraulic pump that can't pump anything. So it's, it's putting strain on the engine too. You keep operating a tractor like that, you're gonna overheat the fluid. So the logic is we have to keep that circle connected. Uh, so yes. it, in the simplest form, the two power beyond hoses right at the back of the tractor have right. to be connected to each yep. other yep. or connected to the backhoe. Yep. Or in my case, they're connected to the, the big hydraulic right. valve Which that we've got here. The fluid goes in and out of that. Yep. And so there's a loop yep. that just extends the loop yep. to that hydraulic yeah. valve. So what's the difference between a power beyond and a regular control valve? Uh, power beyond, we don't have control over. 
again, the fluid's just flowing through there all the time. We can't control a function with that. We can't control a cylinder, the movement of a cylinder, a, a piston in and out, or a, or a, a bo you know, a hydraulic yeah. box blade up yeah. and down, or a backhoe, you know, using the valves. You have no control over that power beyond. So you still need to plumb in a directional control valve, whether it be electric like this, or manual like you would have on a, on a backhoe. You still need yeah. to be able to take that fluid and direct it to a cylinder to do work for you. That's the whole point of hydraulics, right? To do work for us. So it essentially has three choices here. The yes. flow can just flow through these valves, Yes. or it can be directed to push pressure this way, or it can be directed right. to push pressure right. this way. And while it's pushing pressure this way, while the fluid's going out this way, this side of the valve has to be open so the fluid can come out and go back in to the reservoir of the tractor. It has to go somewhere. Back to the first rule, we have to have oil we have flowing. We have to have a loop. So if you have a piston, if you have a cylinder, say a top link cylinder, or on a backhoe, if you're pushing fluid into one side of the cylinder, the piston is extending, the rod is extending, so the fluid in the other side of that cylinder has to be pushed back out, it's going back out. That's how the cylinder um, holds its position when the valve's in neutral. All the ports are blocked, the fluid can't go anywhere, the things, it can't move. That's, that's the whole point of the, um, the directional control valve here also, is that these ports, when the valve's in neutral, whether it be you know, a three-way valve on a backhoe when it's straight up, or in this case, no power, these ports are blocked. The fluid can't go in, can't go out. So that piston can't move. So that's yep. that holds it up or holds it down. Holds it, uh, uh, yep, exactly. Yep. Okay, yep. makes perfect sense. We get a lot of questions about flow and pressure, right? Yep. Yes. Because yes. there's a constant flow running through this system. That's correct. Yes. And then we have this pressure relief valve that we can set the maximum pressure. Right. So how do they relate to each other? How does flow and pressure work? Well, flow is how fast work gets done. How much fluid the pump can push into a cylinder to do work, or multiple cylinders at once. Okay, so more flow makes your cylinder move out faster yep, and faster. Yep, absolutely, yes. Or that flow can be divided to two functions, like on a loader, lift and curl at the same time. Okay. Lower and dump at the same time. On a and backhoe, you know. Maybe make a motor turn too? Make a, make a motor turn uh, faster or slower, absolutely. Or maybe not at all, because uh -huh. if we have not enough flow, a, a motor won't turn. Won't yeah. turn. Yeah, if you can't overcome the resistance of the load that you're trying to turn, then the motor's not gonna turn, it's just gonna stall. Th that's the flow, that's, it's, it's, say again, it's how fast? How fast the work can get done, is okay. the simple, simplest as we can describe it. Okay, how about pressure? Pressure is how much work can, can be done, how, how, how much can we lift, how much can we push, how much can we pull, how hard can we turn a motor? How, how much torque can we get out of a okay. motor? So if I'm pushing oil into a cylinder to try to, to, try to extend it, to yes. lift my loader, for yes. instance, correct. then it's going to continue to increase the pressure on that cylinder yes. until it finally can push it or right. until it, it exceeds stops. the relief. Yeah, exactly. At, at, at some point in time, the pressure, the, it's going to build up and build up and up until it reaches that pressure relief valve that we talked about. It can't push anymore, either because the load's too heavy or we've reached the, the end of travel on the cylinder. And so increasing the flow, back to the flow, that's not going to, that's not going to help it lift anymore, is no, it? No, absolutely not. It just not. goes faster. Absolutely Increasing not. the pressure, even if you have a tiny flow, will eventually lift the load. That's correct, absolutely. So flow is? Flow is how fast the work can be done, Pressure is how much work can be done. Simple enough. These little tractors all have specifications for Absolutely. the flow and the pressure that they're supposed to be sure. set Absolutely. at. I think for this tractor, it's somewhere around 2,000 to 2,050 PSI yes. right, for the right. pressure. Right. Flow is supposed to be about three and a half gallons uh, per minute to the implement. Correct. Is there any way I can test this? You, as a, as a general consumer, owner, hobbyist, whatever, can easily and relatively inexpensively check the pressure of the tractor. You can, you can certainly buy a, a pressure relief gauge like we sell on our website, or you can put one together if you want. You know, there's nothing special here, although, you know, we make it, it's all got the right fittings and all that. But you can plug this into, you plug that connector, quarter inch connector into your loader ports, 
and start the tractor up. You want to do it while the machine's at normal operating temperature. Start the tractor up. Wide open throttle. Wide open throttle. Operate the lever to activate pressure to that port and take a reading on there. Now, that'll make it go into relief because yep. that oil has no place to go, right? Yep, it's, it's a one way. Deadheading right into the valve, right? And so that's gonna be that max pressure. Yep, and you're gonna hear the engine lug down, which is what you want, and you're gonna hold it there for 10 seconds or so and read the pressure. Okay, and you can get that on your site? Yep, boltonhooks.com, yep. We, we, we sell these with various couplers for different sizes of tractors. We have charts and tables there that you can use to figure out what coupler you need for just about any tractor available. Um, How about flow? Flow is a whole other animal. Um, flow gauges are more expensive and more complicated. We have to be able to plug, plug or plumb that into the main. That loop. That loop, we have to plug it into that loop. So a flow gauge is, um, not really something a regular homeowner would have. At the cheapest, you're going to have two to three, four hundred dollars in making a flow gauge setup just to check the, the flow. Um, most dealers have that in their shops for doing diagnostics. So if you suspected something, if you if your pressure was low and you, you couldn't get it set right, um, you know, on how the technical manual tells you to set it, then the next step would be to test the flow, to test the health of the pump. You probably need a dealer involvement there yeah, at yeah, that point or a professional so. mechanic. It's yeah. not something a regular guy is going to get into doing. Now, in an upcoming episode, we're actually going to test the flow. Uh, uh, Ken has brought along a, a, a very expensive and high-end flow tester, and we're going to test it on all the tractors we have here on our property. Yep. Uh, on Ken's tractor, he's got a 3720 deer. And we're going to test it on a 4052R. Uh, a lot of a lot of tests. Right. Uh, with each of those tractors, we'll have some graphs and all available at some point. Right. Uh, on TractorTimeWithTim.com, probably on BoltOnHooks.com too. I'm not sure. Possibly. And um, yeah. On our YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 On uh, both of our YouTube channels, we'll have some of that uh, information. So, stay tuned for that. Ken, I really appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me, Tim. I appreciate it. Okay. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with Tim. Tim.